Hello you guys. Happy New Year. It is 2018. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas, an awesome New Year, and I hope you are well rested because this year we are going to be so, so busy learning different techniques, doing different kinds of things, and having tons and tons of fun. Uh, who's ready for a t-shirt quilt along? Just a quick little reminder that we're going to start our first video on January the 14th. So if you're interested in making a t-shirt quilt, search down in my videos for the announcement on the t-shirt quilt along. We have that coming up. Uh, I have most of my shirts ready for that. Today I wanted to show you an awesome little project making a mug rug from a vintage um, heart. Well, I call this quilt vintage heart mug rug. <laughs> How original, right? <laughs> okay, you guys, look, isn't this so cute? When I started quilting back in 1999, my first love of quilts were crazy quilts. You know, like the Victorian old quilts that have all the stitching and the embroidery and the beading. Uh, so I actually made several of them, not large ones, but uh, ones that you could throw on the sofa. I've always loved that type of piecing work and so today we're going to learn what is called foundation paper uh, foundation paper piecing on freezer paper so we're going to actually learn how to piece this heart with a foundation paper so i'm going to show you that in this tutorial we're also going to show you oh there goes the heater okay just a quick little um another announcement it's winter time here and we have eight inches of snow out there. It's cold here in the shop. So in my next few videos, unfortunately, we're gonna have some background noise with the heater. My apologies, but the girls gotta stay warm. <laughs> and I'm very grateful for my heater. So I just ask that you extend your patience with the background noise in the next several videos. <laughs> okay, where was I? Paper piecing and mitered corners using the backing as your binding. I've done an easy binding tutorial in one of my other um, smaller quilt tutorials, but we didn't do the mitered corners. And so you can see this one has the mitered corners. So if you'd like to learn how to do that, stick to the end and I will show you how to do that. I'm also going to post that little segment of this video separately because a lot of people are looking to learn how to do this and may not be so interested on how to make this lovely little quilt. So, I do have a pattern that is available. The link is down in the description box if you're interested in this pattern. And uh, the material list and all of that fun stuff is in there. And let get, I can't talk today. 2018, I've been out in the shop. Even with the freezer, I'm still cold. Can't talk. Let's go ahead and get started on this fun little mug rug quilt project. All right, getting started. Before the heater comes back on, you guys, I want to let you know when you hear a noise in the background, that is my heater. We've had eight inches of snow. And uh, so it is so cold out here, and so I have to have the heater running. I do apologize for the background background noise that you will hear throughout this video. <laughs> My little toes are like ice cubes. <laughs> but I really wanted to come and share this project with you guys. And what a great way to start off this year than preparing for Valentine's Day, right? So... This quilt is going to feature a method called foundation paper piecing, and we're using freezer paper to do our paper piecing. You can see this heart. I did this yesterday, just trying out my template. Isn't that adorable? And this is a lot like, or just very uh, similar to uh, crazy quilts. If you've ever seen like Victorian crazy quilts, it uh, is along the same lines as that. And you can see the freezer paper template is still on the back of this one. Let's get started and take a look at this 
pattern. It is four pages long. It's a PDF and uh, it prints off very easily and everything is true to size. The first page is a cover sheet so you could put this pattern right into a sheet protector and you would know uh, which pattern this is. It has a materials list and this is just a short list of the things that you're going to want to gather for this project. You have two pattern pieces. The first one is the template that we're going to use today to make this heart as the foundation paper piecing template. And then you have a solid heart template in case you want to forgo all of the paper piecing and you want to do a solid heart on your mug rug. It's the exact same size. And then you get, oh, there goes the heater. <laughs> you get an instruction sheet and uh, it basically basically goes from the beginning to the end with a side note you guys uh, the English paper piecing I tried to type out all the instructions and I was really just making it way more confusing with my words I believe so when we get to the paper piecing on the instructions just refer back to this video I'm gonna walk you through step by step with this process and it'll be much easier than trying to read my jumbled up words on a piece of paper later. So we are ready to get started. Let's put everything else to the side. And right now we're just working with our template. And I have taken a piece of freezer paper. Now you guys know I've used freezer paper in some of my other projects before. It has a dull side and a shiny side. You can see that shine. That shine actually sticks to your fabric when um, heat set with your iron, but it does not leave any gummy residues or anything sticky on your fabrics. And so it's totally safe and makes your projects a lot easier. I went ahead to speed things up and pre-traced my pattern, but you can see when you lay the freezer paper over top of your pattern, you can see very easily right through this paper. And so our first step is to go ahead and trace on the line our heart shape, all of our seam lines, and then you're going to want to make sure you number them so that we do everything in the correct order when we're sewing our seams. Once you have it all traced, go ahead and cut out your heart and I'm going to meet back here with our scrap fabrics and we're going to get started. Okay you guys, to keep things a little bit quicker today, I've gone ahead and pre-assembled my little quilt top. The instructions call for eight two and a half inch squares and you just assemble those in two rows of four and it calls for one uh, eight and a half by eight and a half inch body part square for your quilt top. I think this is really cool because I did not have a fabric that I thought looked very vintage and so I took this white fabric in the house poured some leftover coffee into a bowl and I put this fabric in there so I coffee dyed my fabric this morning. <laughs> I tell you I've been messing around with uh, my vintage uh, journaling stuff way too much. It's rubbing off into my quilt world. So I've gone ahead to save us time and pre-assembled our quilt top and have it layered together just like that. We're going to go ahead and set this aside and we're going to focus on the English paper piecing. I hope that you can see from this angle I'm trying to set things up so that we're not moving the camera too much. Alright, one thing you're going to want to note, make sure you can see this pretty well, with your pattern pieces, you're going to want to make sure that the fabric that you're using for each particular piece is larger than that piece, okay? Larger on all sides. And you're going to want to give yourself a good margin because what happens is when you're um, piecing these, you're going to piece it this way and fold it over. It needs to fold over and cover your entire piece. So I've just gone ahead and grabbed some uh, five inch squares that I had in my stash. I have five of them and we're ready to get started. 
The first thing I do after I cut out my heart to make things easier when I'm actually placing my fabrics is I go ahead and pre-fold all of my lines. And so you'll see the first line here. I'm just going to fold that and basically score my pattern on all of my sewing lines. And that just helps us down the road when we're placing our pieces. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when we're placing our pieces of fabric on. This only takes a second. You just find the line and give it a nice fold. And now our paper template is scored. Our first step is we're going to determine, starting with placement one, which fabric we want to put up at the top. And I think I'm going to go with this black fabric. And then our fabric for number two, and I will go with this lighter fabric here. Praise the Lord, the heater's off. <laughs> that is noisy, but I'm going to tell you it saves me because I would not be able to work out here if it weren't for that heater. So I'm very grateful. But it is noisy. All right, we're gonna preheat our iron to a, a cotton setting. And no steam, you're gonna wanna make sure the steam is off. The first thing we're gonna do, you guys, is we're gonna take the shiny side, is the side without the lines and the numbers. We're gonna take our fabric one and we're going to place it over top of our number one placement. So you can see the fabric is covering this piece all the way around with plenty of extra. And we're going to heat set that with the iron. And heat setting it activates the waxy side of the paper and it sticks to your fabric. Just like that, see? Remember how we scored our fabric? We're going to come back and we're going to just fold on that line. This number five piece is going to get in your way at the beginning so you can just fold that out of the way. We're going to go back and we're going to pick up our fabric number two and we're going to align the edges like this. And now making sure right sides facing each other. The first placement is right side up. The second placement is right side down. We're going to line those together. And we're going to bring this to the machine. We're going to sew a straight seam from beyond the paper piece, keeping this section out of the way and below. And we're sewing right next to the paper, not on the paper. So I'm going to swing you around to the machine and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about when I say right next to, so you can get an idea of how we do that. All right, we're at the machine. We have our two fabrics, again, right sides together. We have our template that's still adhered to fabric number one. And we're gonna take this little flappy part and just fold it up out of our way. We're gonna lower the needle again above where the paper starts. We're going to make sure that our needle is right next to the paper, but not on the paper as we're sewing just a straight seam right down the line. Just like that. Okay, now you can see our sewing line is right next to our paper line. 
but we have not sewn on the paper. So we're going to go ahead and we're going, going to trim this excess off, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance right there. So let's go do that. All right, for this step, you could use your scissors. I like to come in with a rotary cutter. Again, making sure to fold your number five piece, the top of this heart, out of the way because we don't want to cut that off. We're going to line up our quarter inch seam allowance. The quarter inch marks right with the edge of that paper. And we're going to trim off everything that sticks to the right of our ruler. My hand might be in the way for this part, you guys. It would help if the blade is down. <laughs> you guys, oh, this is my second take on these videos today. I went through half of this tutorial already and figured out I had made a mistake. So this is part two, actually. This is the extra that we're trimming off. This just reduces the bulk underneath your heart keeps all your seams nice and uh, less bulky and you can see we've trimmed off all the extra. Now at this point we can refold out everything again. Get that out of the way. We're going to take our number two fabric which is on top and we're just going to open that up. I'm going to give it a good finger press like that and now we can heat set the uh, template to the paper and press our seam making sure the iron doesn't touch the wacky waxy side uh, it's really not like uh, heat and bond where if you get it on the iron it creates a huge mess but it does make a little bit of a, a nuisance we're not talking about buying a new iron, but you would have to clean that off. So you want to avoid the waxy side on the surface of your iron. Okay, so this is where we're at so far and we have our two pieces. We are ready for our placement of number three. So three is down here and this was the first line that we sewed. Now we're sewing between number two and number three. So it'll be this line here, okay? Remember how we pre-folded our um, template? Just pull up your template to that initial fold. Just like that. It might help to go ahead and uh, trim off anything that's more of a quarter of an inch at this stage right here just to uh, help. Let's take that off. Now we're going to take our number three fabric, which we will go with this red one. right sides together. We're going to line up the edge. We're going to take line up the edge. This this view is very hard for me you guys. We're going to line up the edge and we're going to sew from before the paper to below the paper and I'll show you that. All right you guys I have my piece at the machine. Again, we're sewing right next to this paper fold, not on the paper, but right next to it. Just a straight seam. So you can see again, right next to the fold, but not through the paper. Because we trimmed uh, the extra off of that piece before we brought it to the machine, we don't have to trim this now. We lined up both fabrics right on that edge. 
so we can fold this open. I'm gonna give that a finger press. Just like that. And we will press the paper to our fabric number three. Okay, we're at the pressing board. We can go ahead and press our fabric down. And now we're ready to do our number four placement. I'm just going to try and swing you over just like this. So our number four placement is here and we're going to pick out the fabric for that and I believe I'm going to use this one here. So just like before, we're going to fold on this line. Remember we did one, two, now we're going to do the seam between these two pieces and our number four. So it's one, two, three. This is our third sewing line. If your paper is stuck to your fabric, just gently tug at it and it will release up until this point where we pre-folded that line. We're going to go ahead and trim that off. Might be off camera just a little bit, you guys. getting rid of that. We're going to take our fabric four. We're going to place the straight edges together. Just like that. And we're going to sew again right along the fold. I'm going to go ahead and do that and we're going to uh, get ready for piece number five. All right, we have sewed that line together. So you'll see there's our stitching and our paper. We can fold open our template. Give this just a finger press open. And then press our paper down, pressing that seam. And then we are ready to do our last position, which is position number five. I'll swing you around here. <laughs> I really thought this setup was going to be conducive to making an easy video. I don't think it's working, you guys. <laughs> so before my next one, I will figure out a better solution to sewing, cutting, and pressing. All right, for number five... Again, we're going to fold back our piece to our pre-folded line, just like that. Now, because this is the heart shape, remember how initially this piece was getting in our way? This piece is now going to be in our way, not only for trimming off the extra, but for sewing, because we don't want to sew into this part of our heart. So what I found is pretty easy, or makes the whole process easier, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and cut right up into the middle part of that heart, right to the very opening or the very edge of that paper, just like that, okay? And now you can fold your number one piece out of the way, just like we did in the beginning with your number five piece. All right, so now when we trim, we're not cutting our number one piece. And when we sew, we're not sewing into our number one piece because it extends. So let's fold him out of the way. We're going to go ahead and trim the extra off. Lining up with the quarter inch seam. like 
that. And we're going to take our number five piece of fabric, right sides together again. And we're going to sew that seam. I'm going to do that and we're going to come back. All right, we have the seam sewn for our last stitch. And just like that, we have all of our pieces sewn together. So, even though it's five different fabrics, we have one, two, three, four different seams that we're gonna sew for this heart. We're gonna give that a finger press open. And again, a press from the back. We're going to not only press the seam, but we're going to re-adhere that template back to our fabric. All right, now I understand this looks like a big hot mess right now. <laughs> and believe me, you guys, I know that this might have sounded really confusing, all the flipping and stitching and flipping and stitching. But if you give this heart a try, uh, I guarantee you by the end, you will pick up the technique. And if you do a second one, it'll all make perfect sense. So I really suggest that you give it a try because it's not as complicated as uh, what it seems once you've done it a time or two. All right, because our template is ironed to our fabric, we can handle this pretty easily. Now we're going to go ahead and trim out our heart. If you wanted to do a turned applique, you see there's plenty of fabric. You could turn the edges over. For this mug rug, I'm going to do a raw edge applique. So I'm trimming right on the edge of my heart. Just being careful and slow because this will be our finished You could uh, double up your freezer paper, like iron this piece to another in the initial stages to make your template uh, a little bit more sturdy. But, uh, got a few little strings right there. Okay, our big reveal. Ta-da! <laughs> So you can see, you end up having a perfect placement when you use the uh, foundation paper. And uh, you can do several of these and all of them will turn out exactly the same because you're using a foundation as your template. And so even though you could change up your fabrics, all of the seams will be the same. And your heart will look like my heart, different fabrics. So. We have all of our scraps set aside. We have our heart template and we're ready to go ahead and put this onto our quilt top. As you can see, this quilt top is coming together really quite nicely. I was really going for a vintage kind of homey feel. And I think these fabrics really gave me the look I was going for. At this point, our heart is all done. I still have the paper piece on the back. I haven't taken that off yet. And I have uh, pieced together my top. Now, because I believe that there are several ways to do anything, you could uh, leave this part separate when you are adhering your heart to this part. Matter of fact, the instructions say to piece this together and set it aside. 
and then a focus on the heart and putting it onto this square. Because I wanted to speed up this video, uh, I went ahead and assembled the top. And we're going to go ahead and applique my heart onto my quilt top uh, before we quilt it. Okay, because I want to sort of use a decorative stitch there. Because I'm doing raw edge applique, I do want to uh, completely sew around the edge of this. If you did the needle turned applique, you could just hand stitch it or do some kind of uh, decorative stitch as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove this paper template, which is really not as difficult as I'm making it out to be, you guys. <laughs> you see it just peels right off. Just want to be careful with your seams so that you don't pull anything out of whack there. I think because my fingers are cold, I'm having a very difficult time <laughs> today. <laughs> there we go. I'm just really holding these seams down just so that nothing gets pulled out of whack. So even though that looked way harder than it actually is, we have it off. <laughs> And you can see, because we trimmed our seam allowances, everything is very nice on the back. It should lay down fairly flat onto your project. I'm going to go ahead and do a decorative stitch around my heart. And um, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to quilt it and stitch it all at the same time. Yes. I think that's what I'm going to do. You could applique this on separately so that uh, any applique stitches are hidden in the middle of your quilt. I'm going to go ahead and quilt this and applique it all at the same time. So my stitches will show up on the back and that's okay with me. And I want to sort of place my heart kind of tilted just like that. I like that. I'm going to use some Elmer's glue and just at different points close to the edge. I'm going to put some dots and this will just keep it in place while we're stitching and quilting everything together. We're going to heat set that to dry it. And this just takes a few minutes. I've had several people ask me about the glue uh, with your sewing machine. Because we're heat setting it, it does not affect your machine at all. You don't have to worry about it gumming up your needles or causing you issues. When we take this to the machine, the glue is dry. Oh, yes, that's nice and hot. And do you know what I'm going to do? Instead of basting my layers together, I want to make sure that uh, my batting and my backing fabric are lined up. I want to make sure my top has a good inch all the way around because we're going to use the back as our binding. So we're going to center that, giving ourselves an inch all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and just put some little dots of glue that will act like pins and hold our layers together. And that way I do not have to use any pins or basting spray. Again, we're drying the glue 
so there will be no issues. And we're basting our quilt all at the same time. <laughs> and it doesn't take a lot, you guys. Just little tiny dots will be enough to keep all your layers together. And because I used coffee to dye my fabric, it smells like coffee in here. <laughs> Making sure everything's flat and we're going to heat set that glue. There's so many different things you could do with um, these paper piece uh, appliques like this because it looks very vintage. Uh, you could go in with a decorative stitch and uh, re-stitch over your seam lines. If you've ever seen uh, Victorian crazy quilts, they have all kinds of like hand embroidery and stitched embroidery along the seams. You could add lace. You could do some bead work on there. At first thought, I had thought about putting a piece of lace here, but I think for this one, I'm just going to keep it simple. Just like that, our glue is dry and our quilt is basted together, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I will reposition the, uh, the camera to the sewing, ma sewing machine. And uh, I'm going to just probably fast forward through the next part, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to um, do a decorative stitch around our heart and that will keep that permanently in place. And, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and quilt this while we're there. And uh, the last part is we'll come back and see what it looks like. All right, you guys, I'm ready to get started. Anytime that you do a decorative stitch, you want to make sure that you have the correct presser foot on so that you're not breaking a needle when the needle goes from side to side. So I've changed my presser foot. And another little helpful tip is to uh, check your settings on just a scrap piece. Uh, sometimes the um, default setting is fairly large or, or on the smaller side. And so you can go ahead and adjust the stitch width and length on a scrap piece before you actually start sewing on your project. So I always have these little scraps hanging around so that I can make sure my tension's right make sure my stitch is set right and now we are ready to get started. I'm really hoping that my arm doesn't get in the way as I'm stitching this so that you'll be able to see. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm just doing a decorative stitch to secure my applique in place. Uh, I am going to stitch this out and then I'm going to switch to a straight stitch and do some quilting within my little um, two and a half inch box over here and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to quilt the background or not I'm kind of deciding as I go so uh, enjoy the stitch out on this quilt and I'm going to fast forward it and I'll see you at the end
here we are and we are all stitched up. I went ahead and did a straight stitch in the ditch quilting along our seams here. And I did a decorative uh, applique stitch around our heart. And because I did that as part of the quilting, you do see that decorative stitch on the back of our quilt. One thing I wanted to point out, you guys, is that when you're quilting and you're going to use the backing as part as your binding, make sure that when you're quilting, you do not extend past the edge of the top of your quilt into this part because this part will be your binding and you don't want to see any of this stitching when we flip that over to the back. So remember to stop at the edge of your quilting, uh, at the edge of your quilt top if, when you're doing the quilting if you're using the back as your binding. But I think that turned out really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get set up to do the binding. We're going to do an easy binding with mitered corners this time and then we'll be done. Here we are, you guys. We have our complete quilt, uh, all of our layers, and it has been quilted. Let me start by saying that usually when I do this easy binding method, I usually like to leave at least an inch all the way around on all four sides. But because I was not very careful, I was too excited to make my video. <laughs> I was not very careful in centering up my quilt top to allow for the inch all the way around so on this side I have less than an inch and on this side I have more than an inch so that's not gonna quite work <laughs> so usually make sure that you leave yourself an inch and go ahead and trim out your back and your um, batting to an inch all the way around your quilt top just by measuring with a ruler all the way around you would want to make sure your backing extends an inch all the way around I really cut it close on this one you guys uh, and so we're gonna make this one a pretty small little thin binding I'm gonna trim this out to uh, a little more than half an inch okay I really don't want to do that but that's what we're gonna do So you're going to take your rotary cutter and we are lining up our measuring line with the edge of our quilt and at this point we are trimming off the excess of the back and the uh, batting. I'm going to try and give myself as much binding as possible. Usually, like I said, you would cut an inch. So at this part, we're just trimming off the back. Then I'm going to go ahead and fold this back back as far as possible because we want to get rid of this extra batting. We don't want that in our binding. So we have folded that all the way back and now we can trim this extra batting off. being very careful not to cut the back of your quilt. <laughs> so see what we've done there? We've trimmed the back and then we trimmed away the batting and we're going to re repeat that process all the way around our quilt top. Again, you want to measure out an inch. I have to come in at less than an inch because I goofed. See, we're not always perfect all the time. <laughs> now we're going to fold the back back as far as possible out of the way. Make sure it stays folded back as you flip it back over. And now we're just trimming the batting away. Right to the edge of our quilt top. Pull that back out and you see the batting is gone and this is trimmed. I 
really should have been more careful. <laughs> but at this stage, you guys, I'm not recording it a, a third time. We're just going to go with it. Now, again, trimming away the batting. And we have one more side to do. Always keeping in mind, make sure that backing is folded back as far as possible. You don't want to trim that this far along in your project and have to start all over again. Okay, now we are ready to start the binding process. I'm going to go ahead and preheat my iron. To a cotton setting and uh, make sure the steam option is off and grab yourself a glue stick yes this time we're gonna use a glue stick I like to use the um, Elmer's washable school glue and a glue stick so warm up your iron we'll be right back all right you guys we are at the pressing board now we have our iron preheated and we are ready to start the binding on this quilt using the backing fabric. Keep in mind, I'm going to have a little bit of a hard time because I did not have a full inch. When you trim yours out, you'll have a full inch to work with, so yours will be much easier than mine will be. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to do this with a mitered corners and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our glue stick ready. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one edge and we're going to fold the back fabric to the edge of our quilt top. Not on the quilt top, but butt it up to the edge. I'm actually not going to butt mine up that far, but you'll want to bring yours up to the edge because I have less to work with. I'm bringing mine a little bit away from the edge and you're going to give that a good press and you're going to want to make sure that this is as straight as possible because this will be viewed from the front of your quilt Yours will be much easier to do than mine is because I have very little fabric to work from and that's my goof up, but we're going to make it work. All right, once that is folded in half, we're going to take our glue stick and we're going to run some glue all along the backing that is folded over right along through there and now we're going to fold our backing onto our quilt top so you can see how tiny my little binding is going to be <laughs> and that's okay now we're going to give this a good press to dry the glue and set the glue. And just like that, we have the binding done for this side of the quilt. 
can see how nice that looks even though it's a little tiny binding yours will be a little bit thicker because you're going to have more to work with we're going to rotate our quilt and this is the part where we come in to do the mitered corner so that first edge is just a straight fold over once and then fold over onto the quilt top the second edge is going to be slightly different we're going to take this corner and we're going to make a little triangle fold with a 90 degree angle just like that. I hope you can see that. We're going to give it a good little press. My little burst of steam so it sets a little bit better there. We're going to take our glue stick. We're going to tack that down so that it stays while we're working with this side. See how that stays perfectly where it's supposed to? Now we're going to again fold this in half just like we did the first side. Come in with our glue and just rub the edge of, of this binding right along to the end. And then fold this right on top. Let's start at this end. Hopefully my fingers are not in the way. Now when you get down to this corner you have some time with that glue to manipulate the corners so that they line up perfectly uh, mitered there and just heat set that in place. And everything is dry and sticking and I will show you a close up of that mitered corner. Now we rotate again. Again, we're going to make the little triangle down at this corner. Uh, let's go ahead and put the glue on there. And then heat set that in place. I'll tell you what, before I even start folding this, I think it would be much easier if I just ran some glue through there because I have so little to work with here. a little bit easier. Again, we're taking our glue stick. We're going to get that corner really good and then run it along the edge of our binding all the way down to the end. We're going to heat set again. Again, we have time to manipulate and match up with those corners really well. All 
and our glue is dry and we are on to the fourth side. Now the fourth side you'll note that both sides have been turned so both sides you'll want to do the little fold in the corner. We'll start with this side. Set that and press your half mark. Run your glue and make sure you got plenty into those corners there. And then bring it up over top of the quilt. Now remembering that this is school glue and so it does wash out of your quilt projects if you desire to wash this at some point. And when you take this to the machine to do your stay stitch all the way around, it will not gum up your machine because as we're pressing, we're drying the glue. And then just like that, you guys, we have used the back of our quilt to make the binding. And you'll see the little mitered corners. Not too bad considering I only had maybe a little bit over half an inch to work with. <laughs> you guys will have a much easier time because you should have a full inch all the way around to work with. At this point, all you have left to do is a stay stitch, which is a just a straight stitch, or you could use a decorative stitch if you wanted, but you're going to come right along the edge of your binding, not on your quilt. Remember, we're sewing our binding down. So right along the edge, we're going to just do a straight stitch all the way around, and you are done. And this is uh, easy binding you, doing mitered corners. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down below. You can find me uh, at Facebook at Lisa Cape and Quilts. And uh, I would love to walk you guys through if you have any questions. I hope you find this useful. And uh, if you have been here through this whole project, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this little pattern with the um, foundation paper piecing. If you'd like to see that video, it is either right above this one or right below. I'll also put a link to the tutorial on this quilt top in the description box. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week, and I hope you have fun with this quilt. Bye, you guys.